I guess even though we were free, we were still slaves in the mind. Nasty! What's going on, family? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Know Yourself Academy. It's your guy, Boro the Lucky Libra here. And as you can see by the title, we're going to be getting into the Leo rising sign. Now, see, I was going to take a little smoke break in between, you know, recording this series, you feel me? Because I like to just knock these series out all at once if we're doing a certain series of videos. So if there's 12 videos for each individual sign, I like knocking them all out one by one by one. But... I'm in a row, I didn't feel like stopping and smoking, so we're going we gonna to intertwine this spliff in this uh, Leo Rising video, alright? It's probably going to be more entertaining for y'all to watch me smoke, because we're dealing with entertainment energy right now with the Leo Rising energy, you know? My sense of humor and my creative expression might step up a little bit, so I know you Leo Risings may appreciate that watching this video, alright? Now, with... First of all, what is your rising sign? What is your rising sign? The rising sign is the zodiac constellation that you have in the first house, all right? And when we talk about the first house, this is dealing with your personality at its core, all right? The, the person you are when you're not using your sun acting or you're not using your moon reacting to something, just who you are, all right? The things that you're into, how you see people's personal issues, all right? That's your rising sign. And another significant reason why it's important to understand your rising sign, because you understand your spiritual, your personal life path here in this lifetime. And you see those things by the angles that are hitting your first house from the fourth house, which is the uh, a square, which is the seventh house, which is the opposition, and the tenth house, which is a square. And we know squares and oppositions are learning processes. So this is how you see your spiritual path in the first house. So, as when you have the Leo archetype in your first house, this is this is fixed fire. So when we talk about fixed signs, we know they're dealing with consistency and stubbornness, being fixed, whether in a thought, feeling, emotion, or whatnot. But since it's fire, it's being fixed in a way it feels and sees things. So, you know, when you have that in the first house, you're a personally you personally stubborn and fixed with the way you see things the way you act on things all right as a leo rising you watch the way people creatively express themselves but how people express themselves period and as a leo rising it may not make see this is the things you got to understand like fire water air earth depending on the element is the is the you know the filter that they go through first when they when you talk about communication or relating or thinking or feeling these different elements are activated first depending on what you're dealing with so as a leo rising you may be communicating with a leo rising and depending on their sun and moon remember because the, the the first house deals with how you may appear to be to others all right, I mean, how you may appear to be, but depending on your sun and moon, is if you're actually that way. Now, when you have Leo here, you know, it may not even matter what how you're communicating to the Leo rising. What you look like, it's 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 how you're expressing it. You can be expressing, communicating a very intellectual point in an angry way. They gonna pick up on that. Oh, this person is fired up about this, huh? This person is pretty, pretty riled up and angry. This this person must be in their feelings about this, huh? This is what the Leo's thinking in their head. They're not really thinking about what the points, the the valid ass points you're making. So you have to be very aware of this when you're communicating, dealing with a Leo rising because sun and moons too, but Leo rising because this is how you, your rising sign is how you view other people's personal issues as well so when you see somebody expressing themselves this is what you look to look to first how they're expressing themselves the feeling they're pushing out all right so you know um but you have somebody that can be personally enlightening all right likes to shine the light on others all right somebody that leo risings attract more attention then the sun, they attract more attention naturally in comparison to Leo suns and moons. Leo suns know, excuse me, Leo suns, they know where to go and what to do to get the attention, all right? Leo moons feel like they need to get the attention, so they feel like they got to manifest that stage in their life. Leo risings attract the attention 
subconsciously because the Leo, the sun that fixed fire is just their personality. So whether that fire manifests in their personal issues through the way they dress, which is to them just how they dress, the way they appear to be, the way they do their hair, the way they use their hands and their face and whatnot when they talk, the way they crack jokes, they're not aware of that. The sun is more, the Leo sun is more aware of how they do these things. The Leo moon, even though it's more dealing with the subconscious, it's still more aware than the, the rising because the rising is just what you're doing when you're not acting or reacting. It's just things that, the substance that you are. This is where your spirit was when it was making your, your, your sun sign and your moon sign and all that. This is the area it was at, okay? This is the area the sun was what was at when you took your first breath. So with that being said, just them pushing out that energy in that way, they may attract people who view them as doing things for attention when they're just really being themselves. When the Leo sun is being dramatic, outrageous, or doing something for attention, they kind of know in the back of their head what they're doing. All right? And the moon too. All right, they have their their feelings and their emotions mixed up with what they're doing, and they know they may be reacting off of you feeling emotion. The Leo rising attracts secret haters because they people look at them like why they that why they feel like they gotta outdress everybody or or always think everything's a, a fashion statement or fashion show or like you don't even have to be I don't even want to condense it down to fashion because that's really very surface level too. But like, why does person always feel like you know? They got to come and be on the stage or something, be a center of attention when they wasn't purposely trying to. All right. So, you know, this is just the energy of the sun. It shines. So depending on where that sun is, that's how it's going to shine, what area of life is going to shine. So when it's in the first house, personally, you shine. Now, if you're a positive or negative spirit, what type of shit you shining into? What type of shit people are seeing you naturally into? All right. Because whatever house you have the sun in, having... Whatever house you have the sun in, it lights up. All right. So these are it's like an area of life people are gonna be able to see, you know, through you. So having Leo in the first house is like having the sun here. The sun is your chart ruler. So as a Leo rising, you want to know what house you have your sun in, so you can see what area of life your personality and whatnot is gonna be pushed out. All right, where it's gonna be active the most. But when you have the sun in the first house, since the sun shines, it lights up. People are going to see your personal insecurities and personal issues. All right. People are going to see these things. All right. And, you know, like I said, whether you're a positive or negative spirit, you know, people are naturally going to be able to see this off you. You go for a job interview it's going to be like, all right, this is example. This is a Leo rising for an example. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know the uh, movie. Um, Don't be a menace while drinking juice in the hood with Sean and Marlon Wayne's. Y'all see when Marlon Wayans go to the, the interview, the business interview, his job interview, I mean, and you see how he just, like, he, he not even trying to fake the funk. He's saying, like, yeah, like, you know, I ain't never had a job before. Like, you know, I drink and smoke and blah, blah, blah. Like, he not even trying to fake the funk. Like, it's so easy for the interviewer to see what type of person they're dealing with. Hey. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, here, why don't you fill out this application? Right. Aaliyah Rising, you're going to see that. You're going to see their personality, personal issues, what they're into, like this. Like this. Because personally, the sun is there. It's shining light on their personality even more than uh, others. All right? This is, in a, in a way, it plays out like this. I don't want to. It plays like like this a little dip, a little in a little something sun. Like all right, when I talk about the Aries rising, the difference is like because the sun is exalted in Aries, but the sun is home in Leo. So it's like with the sun in Aries, the sun is dealing with your actions, but you got Mars here, so you aggressively push out your actions. So a Aries, Aries rising probably goes. I mean goes takes more of the conscious initiative for people to know what they into because it got a sense of vulnerability mixed in there with mars it, it want people to know what's up with them so it can step into situations not having to uh you know worry about taking care of certain business like it don't want people all up in this shit or knowing how it get down all right so it'll consciously push out that how that energy and shine light on 
the way it wants to go about certain things. The Leo rising is doing that subconsciously, all right? So may get into fights with certain people of certain stupid, low, mundane, surface level situation because somebody simply hating on you because they may think the way you act and express yourself is condescending to them or offensive to them in some type of shape or form, all right? So, you know, you Leo Risings probably reflect on situations you've got into fights or confrontations with people just because of the way you act or the way you said something. And in your head, you're like, what? Like, yo, what this person got on me? Like, that would be that secret hater shit right there, all right? Now, in the fourth house, we have, um, in the fourth house, we have Aquarius. No, sorry. In the fourth house, we have Scorpio. All right. So in the home, Leo, uh, Leo rising, you feel me, is going to go through a lot of transformative situations in the home. A lot of ego deaths, a lot of, you know, bursts and deaths, like personality wise, their ego being shut down or whatnot. All right. In the fourth house, it has a lot of, it's going to be in the home area. You feel me? When they're growing up, trying to create emotional comfortability for themselves and seek that you know it's going to be some turbulent situations when that because you have scorpio you have mars here all right so a lot of uh situations where where you know you could be holding your emotions back and, and for the greater good for to, to prevent a catastrophe or a catastrophic moment in your family or in your household or you're dealing with you know tempered parents tempered siblings or uh you know situations that when your that attention that you want is is gonna be cut off here and there, all right. That attention and you're looking you're looking for where you could place this this attention. I mean this energy for you to be seen or your personality to shine or whatnot. But you go through that in the household in different shapes and forms, whether dealing with your parents, dealing with your siblings, dealing with the air, the environment that you live in. All right, you know in some shape or form. The, the line the, is, 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 is told to like simmer down to like or change up or not to roar as loud as a Leo rising and then this is like the learning process here getting your getting stung by the scorpion in the fourth house learning how to learn eat through that and either humble yourself or move through that pain of being having that ego death having that you know that shade throw on your son in the home environment and then when you take that into the seventh house, seventh house we have Aquarius. So in Aquarius, it's the opposite sign. This is the opposition. And we know the seventh house is dealing with how you relate to others on a one-on-one -on -one level. So when you have Aquarius here, you manifest relationships of people, detached people, all right? And, uh, you know, people that, you know, they're into their own individual space, individual thing, and have their own different ways, the reserved ways of connecting on a one-on-one -on -one level. You manifest a lot of these situations, and when you're in these situations trying to build with somebody or not, you're going to start learning, you know, it ain't all about you, or sometimes you're going to have to learn as a Leo rising that, you know, you can't, you can't always have people adjust how they love or how they communicate on a one-on-one -on -one unique individual level to suit your personality because in the fourth house you know you was looking for that attention and even though you gain it naturally personality wise through your in the first house because that's your personality in the fourth house when you're at home where you truly want to gain emotional comfortability it's hard for you to get that and you go through transformative situations so when you go into the seventh house in the, and relate to other people places and things externally in the seventh house which is the second half of the zodiac all right and when we talk about to the second half of the zodiac from the seventh to the twelfth house this is relating more so with the external first through the sixth is the internal so when you get to seventh house you have to learn that relating to one-on-one -on -one, to others in the one-on-one -on -one level it ain't all about suiting your personal wants okay and you got you have to learn to be more of an individual with the way you relate to others all right and respect other other people's individuality and manifesting relationships and situations that are detached from suiting your wants suiting you know your attention suiting fitting your light you know and constructing your light in the way you want it to be seen you're gonna it's gonna teach you you're gonna so you're gonna have that give and receive because when you talk about uh, opposition is learning to give and receive because it's on the same spectrum so in a way your opposite sign is the ops but you are on the same spectrum all right energy frequency vibration wise so that's what you got to keep in mind as a Leo rising, okay? You know, 
you gotta learn and, and as a Leo rising you, you like I said in the when we was going the first house you want to shine the light on others but you may be like I said you're gonna manifest detached situations so you may be in a situation where you're trying to validate and, and tell somebody how much you're into them or how beautiful they are or what you, how much you like about them whatnot and you may be dealing with somebody that don't even want that type of energy and to you it may be subconscious you may not saying that you don't mean these things it may be subconscious because in a way you want to be treated like that you want to be loved like that you want to be validated like that you want to hear that from somebody else you may not be dealing with somebody that communicates like that and or communicates they love like that and it may be somebody that truly does it through their expressions or through their, i mean through their actions or what they provide or or you know or just doesn't communicate and validate and shine the light on you as much but it doesn't mean they doesn't they don't uh, value you as much. They don't really care about you. And you have to be able to decipher that, all right? Like I said, you're going to manifest situations. And this is people, places, and things. Whether it's a career that you get unmotivated for because they're not pushing you to get to a certain position. When you keep that position for you is obtainable. But you feel like you need to that gratification towards hearing what you're good at or whatever. You can't always want that as a Leo rising. you got to learn you to be detached from that as well to get from point a to b and do what makes sense on a practical level aquarius like energy in the seventh house then in the tenth house all right that first house tenth house square the tenth house deals with how you rise to a status of something okay and here we have taurus all right so as a leo rising you know uh not just how you rise to a status sign is also tenth house is also dealing with you know your social status in general how you're seen through the stability and foundation you built through yourself through energies you acquired through your spiritual travels and your experiences so when you have taurus here okay that taught the lesson the square lesson they learned here from the first house in the tenth house like taurus is fixed earth so a leo rising you guys have to learn to get fixated on some sort of way to stabilize yourself in this lifetime instead of just having your fire everywhere all right searching for the stage everywhere you got to learn how to direct that focus and stay stable stay con uh, uh consistent on that uh idea goal orientated goal uh that point of reaching in a relationship or whatever it is the right whatever you're trying to rise to the status of in your life period does not just uh you know career anything relationships how you rise to a status of something uh, uh evolution a transformation of something in your life so you have to learn that you you're gonna have to learn to get stable and consistent and grounded on something all right you can't just be you know trying to you know ha like i said like it, it's fixed fire in the first house so it is a consistent fire it is the flame that you see dancing that it's a blaze and it's moving and it's consistently moving right it's not the spark like aries and it's not the 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 feel of the heat or the spread of the fire like sagittarius so it is fixed so it's consistent already in that sense but when we talk about 10th house rising to the status sign it has to be consistent on on the practicality of a situation or not just how to how it feels about something not just how something is being expressed to it the practicality and logic of a situation to st help stabilize it all right and the more leo risings learn to do that the more they're gonna see how they get from point a to b in relationships point a to b in their goals all right you can't just be going off how you feel about things and how you feel like things should be catered to you or how things should be constructed how the stage we're talking every time we talk, bring up leo energy fifth house energy we're talking about you know the stage and creative expression in a way so in the tough house you, you learn that you learn that trying to rise to the status of something like all right sometimes you got to take a little cold colder drier path to get somewhere all right sometimes you know you're not going to be glorified right away on the first win you gotta you gotta you gotta drink build some more w's up before you get to some type of praise the praise you're looking for to or or whether rising to the status of having a relationship at a healthy level you got to take more practicality and see what makes sense instead of how you feel whether trying to get a goal, whether you're an artist or, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to be an executive somewhere, you got to see what makes sense and not just how you feel and what you choose, what you see. All right. About the situation, because we know the Leo archetype, sun, moon, risings, could you guys go off what you see. You guys can act off of visions and other people's expressions. So you have to learn to get that balance of being able to see that beautiful, creative visions that you guys catch 
and decipher the practicality in that, all right? And I'm not saying to dub now your creativity because that's what makes you guys so special. Leos are some of the most creative beings we have here and demonstrate and create some of the most creative stuff, whether you're talking about music, art, uh, actors, uh, just anything entertainment-wise, all right, in the creative expression field. However, you know, um, when we get to that 10th house, you got to learn to build off that, all right? Make something concrete off of that, okay? Can't just be up in the air all the time, okay? Like, l let's, let's see you gain some foundation and stabilize yourself in this lifetime, you know, and see you make a foundation of all the creativity you have to just naturally spur off to the world, all right? Remember, because the Leo rising, it's more subconscious. It's more of, you know, the light that they have. They're not truly consciously acting on it or re or needing an external external reference to react to it aka their moon sign so it's what the things that they're naturally into natural artists but don't realize they think they're just as good as other good artists that they see but they need a friend to tell them yo like sell that like market it like whatever so this is what you learn in the temp house all right get some, build some security off of that so Y'all already know what it is. It's, that's the Leo rising sign for y'all and all that and all that. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and go over some celebrities that are Leo risings, all right? Now, we have... I had this joint on... I had this joint on what? Cancer rising? So, Leo rising. Where that? Where that? Where that? Where that? All right, there we go. There we go. Leo Risings. So for Leo Risings, we have Marilyn Monroe, Donald Trump, <laughs> Johnny Depp, all right, Selena Gomez, Justin Timberlake, all right, Drake. Like, look at the people I'm naming. These is natural personalities, natural entertainers. Not like their personality is. You feel me? It just shines. It's just. It's just. Chris Brown. You feel me? Al Pacino, Celine Dion. Feel me? You feel me? Who else we got on? Let's get some more out there. Demi Lovato, Jessica Alba. All right, Pablo Picasso, artist. Marilyn Manson. All right, all right. Got a couple more. Jack Nicholson. I think he's a Leo son too. No, he's a Taurus son. All right. George Bush. All right, all right. Adam Levine. All right. Tina Turner. Like Muhammad Ali. Like you know. Yali Horizons got some names up there. Frida Kahlo. Yali Horizons got some names up there. Natural artists, natural entertainments. People's personalities. You could sit down and watch the interviews and it's just like, damn, so much wisdom. The, the sun, when we talk about Leo, the, the sun is light. Yeah, that's, that's enlightenment. That's wisdom as well. Like, don't get that twisted too. When we talk about the sun and fire too, that's being enlightened. So, you know, you got some wise Leos out there. All right. I know Nipsey Hussle, Nipsey Hussle's a Leo, all right? Um, so it's like, and he, he was like, you know, real cool, calm and collective, wise Leo, for real, for real. I don't really know, I think he was Aquarius Moon, I don't really remember, but uh, yeah, man, that's the Leo Risings for y'all, so y'all already know what it is, man, like, share, subscribe, and all that, and all that, and we're gonna continue the next joint with the Virgo Rising sign. Until then, peace.